What is ATM jackpotting? Well, ATM jackpotting is the practice of identifying and taking advantage of an ATM's vulnerabilities. The goal of these jackpotting operations is to pressure the machine into dispensing all of its cash reserves. If the hackers are successful, they will be able to take all the money from the ATM. Technically speaking, none of the bank's clients often face the brunt of the assault since they do not belong to any accounts. The main targets are standalone ATMs that are situated in retail stores or away from bank facilities. Jackpotting requires a physical connection to the device. Therefore, hackers often pose as technical experts or security professionals to get access to the ATM secretly. The first jackpotting assault probably took place in January 2018. The United States Secret Service alerted banking and law enforcement organizations to this assault on ATMs in a news statement. Their Electronic Crimes Task Force allies provided them with reliable information on upcoming jackpotting assaults in the U.S. So, how does ATM jackpotting work? Well, you require a rogue device and physical access to the ATM in order to conduct an ATM jackpotting operation. A rogue device is a wireless hardware attack tool, similar to a portable computer, that isn't authorized to access a network but is instead there to inflict damage, steal data, and interfere with the network's regular operations. Threat actors remove the hard disk and delete any antivirus software after successfully breaking into the ATM's internal computer. The absence of the antivirus enables the hackers to put their malware in place, swap out the hard disk, and restart the ATM. Usually, the jackpotting process takes under a minute. Now, there are two main types of ATM jackpotting. Number 1. Malware based jackpotting. This jackpotting method uses a USB drive. The USB drive is often inserted into an ATM's USB terminal while being highly infected with malware. The hacker arrives to collect the cash that the virus causes the machine to dispense. Even with malware present, the ATM would function properly and be accessible to other customers. But when the hacker activates the software, the ATM begins pouring money into the waiting hands of the mule, who serves as a middleman for the hacker and the ATM. When the money is ready to be collected, The hackers send someone who is also in on the operation. Since CCTV cameras are often the sole form of protection at off site ATMs, threat actors and their mules just need to hide their identities or avoid being seen. These malware based cash distributions do not correspond to any bank account withdrawals. Plutus D, a well known instance of jackpotting malware, has many modifications that enable it to operate without issue on the ATMs of more than 40 distinct ATM suppliers in 80 countries. And number two, black box attack. The rogue gadgets in this instance are referred to as black boxes. These may be anything from laptops to Raspberry Pi, which are reasonably simple to acquire or create, and replicate the internal computer of the ATM. There are two methods to utilize the black box. The first entails simulating the ATM's internal computer, establishing a direct connection with the cash dispenser, and giving it instructions to disburse cash. The other approach entails connecting to network cables and obtaining cardholder data. Normally, this data is sent between the ATM and the transaction center in charge of handling the transaction session. Black box attacks impersonate the host system and cause the ATM to disburse all of its available cash at once. Despite the fact that all ATMs have a maximum withdrawal limit per transaction or customer. So, guys, this was the story of ATM jackpotting attack and how it works. Hope you found the video informative, and if you did, please give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.